So Parok, Parok, kind of like a Vegeta, and it's just a very powerful deck for sure. I, I've been seeing, honestly, I, I like Bardock, almost like a replacement Vegeta. It's something that gives yourself crit and it gives yourself inherent boost. So it's a leader that is very powerful. It came in the Dark Invasion starter deck. It can every turn send the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard. If it mills a color card, I believe it gets plus ten. If it mills a black card, it gets a it gets a, uh, a crit. So very. I think it's a very under like it's an underestimated. It, it's not something that a lot of people look at and they're like, man, the card's insane. You know, I feel like it's something like once you start playing against it, you're like. Hey, wait, this, this guy's actually really, really good. So we're going to see what Bardock has in stock with us here. And, you know, these guys are doing fantastic out of, out of four rounds. I mean, they're playing extremely good opponents. They're playing against a very good field. And we're going to see how it matches up. And we saw a pen already. So, so it's plus 5k, by the way, not plus 10k. Bardock sorry, plus 5k. 5K. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was actually... I, I know that I must have said 10k. My bad. But a uh, very good card nonetheless. I mean... It, it has that ability that it swings for an awakened power when it's unawakened, which is very powerful. The only thing you're missing out on is the draw. So other than that, it's just, I, I don't know, it's, it's just a very good leader. Like, you don't have to be awakened. If you're unawakened, you're like, oh, okay, I'm fine. I'm hitting for 15 grit. And if you are awakened, you're hitting for 20 grit because it has the same ability on the flip side. So uh, it's going to be a very interesting match for sure. Uh, what is, uh, is Gerson playing anything spicy in his deck? Is he playing? Uh, it looks like he's playing the Goku engine with Pan. So he's running the GT Goku engine with Pan. So, uh, we've seen how explosive that deck can be. And, uh, to run with Pan is pretty interesting, actually. So what you're gonna do is you're pretty much gonna wait to awaken until you have the full combo, and then you're gonna awaken to the combo. So it's like, you tap yourself off of the combo, awaken, untap the 200 deep, then do more combo. Nice. Well, that seems really interesting. And Eric, shot the bat here. It looks like he is a just black, black red, black red Bardock deck. Which I was actually thinking about making two, which is crazy. I just didn't have enough time to brew. It's been a really, really, really crazy week. Here. And I think red is the best pair with with, with the Bardock leader because then it's inherently a aggressive leader. I think Overrealm is an aggressive mechanic as well. It just lets you play additional creatures every turn, and it's something that just gives you more value, more value, and more power, and it just increases the ceiling for what you can do in a turn, especially when you have cards that just get inherently free of free attacks. He's playing the popular red card, Saiyan Kaba, uh, further in destruction Kaba, I mean Champa, a manipulating God Champa, so he has a mini lineup in there, and of course Jiren, Fist of Justice. So we see Eric at 8 life, and we see uh, Gerson chilling down at 6 life. So this is, uh, I'm actually really excited for this match. I don't know about you, but I'm just, anytime we're not seeing the broken tier 0, I'm, I'm super happy. Yeah, no, it is, it is super exciting because I played the Bardock leader because I was playing like the starter deck. And it's just really, it's just insane. It's just extremely good, just unawakened and awakened. And it just fueled over Rome perfectly. So it was like when you saw that new cooler deck make its debut in Charlotte, it's just something that I feel Bardock has just perfected and made this infinitely better because it's just so much more powerful. Uh, so it is something that you might see just be a major player. I mean, like Vegeta was was player, right? Because that's crit. And now this guy. Well, the self awakening is what made Vegeta so good. Yeah, the self awakening was actually a huge upside. It's a little bad. Yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> okay, you heard it, heard it here first. Machado <laughs> confirming Vegeta leader was back card. It is, I mean, I don't <laughs> like it. I don't like it, but it's good. It's definitely good. And uh, Eric playing the new Bardock promo, which I love. This is the, uh, this is your awakening. This is your uh, only form of awakening, I think, in the deck minus Kaba. So you're playing four Kaba, and let me see how many of these he's playing. Awakened Warrior Bardock, no, that's not it. Increasing Evil Mass Saiyan, he's playing four. He's playing four Kaba. Gives you eight outlets, which are all a one life pin in the form of battle cards. And I think that's very strong. Uh, because if your opponent just hits you one or two times, then all you gotta do is resolve, you know, three, 
two to three of them, and you're awakened. And I mean, that's granted that your opponent doesn't hit you at all. And if your opponent doesn't hit you at all, sure, I'm gonna get Mark Crit. Uh, 15 to your unawakened, you know, 10. So, very good card. And, I don't know, uh, it's just, we're gonna see how it works against Pan because I, I don't know if it's as good against Pan. I don't know what Eric's matchups were. Probably had to play at least two Mega Freezes during the tournament. He was so, talking about it earlier, that he had a rough matchup. He actually beat Marcel. Oh, really? He beat Marcel. Wow. Uh, he said it, he barely beats Mecha Freezer. Like, it's just, he literally eats by, is what he said. Uh, in his Martel matchup, I was talking to him ahead of, before the matchup, like I always do when I do my player introduction, but uh, he said he combo 50k, and Marcel only had 50k. Oh. So that's how he was able to win, but it was a very close matchup between them. He said that he's having a lot of trouble with the Freeza matchup, uh, but he's barely being able to luck sack out of it, is what he told me. His exact words, I was barely able to luck sack out of it. I feel like it's just... It's a deck that just gets by. Because when I was playing the starter deck, I was just like, I didn't feel like I was in a significant advantage the whole time. Um, I, I felt like there was just like, I don't know, like the thing with overrun cards, it's like you're losing a card. You're not like, you don't ever have that inherent like board presence every single time. It's trying to like, you know, they appear for a quick second, they hit you and then they just run away and disappear. So uh, it's just something that um, is just very, very powerful. And it's just, it's powerful, but it doesn't give you that advantage, like that board stay, you're not building up big crazy boards that could be killed, stuff like that. And that's why I feel like the deck would just be like really annoying and really passive because it has nothing on your opponent's turn for them to interact with. And on your turn, you're just like, you know, you're, you're just beating them down with your leader and an overall card. Well, his board presence primarily is going to be red cards. Well, so yeah, it's like, Tava that's that's all he's going to really have because you're only right, his cards are going to warp out at the end of the turn unless he hard casts them, which... 98% of the, the, the black cards actually have on warp abilities, so it's, it's there's no point in not warping them. Um, it, also, you gotta remember you're burning through a lot of your deck with that leader. You're consistently putting three cards. In. Oh yeah, it is. I, I was getting really close to decking out a lot of the times. Uh, it, it would come down to me having like three or four cards in hand, and then I mean four, three or four cards in deck, and me just like barely squeaking out a win just because like, I was able to like, inherently just beat them down faster. So, it's something that's not 100%, like, you know, you're always going to have a huge advantage, you're always going to have a huge amount of cards in hand, or anything like that. But, well, also uh, something to note, uh, Gerson's actually quite poor on any awakening in this game. Ooh. Or Red Sense Gate. Red Sense Gate. Red Gate. Red Sense Gate. Sense Gate. Sense Gate. Sense Gate. It's going to be... It's going to be tough for Eric, because he's playing four times. He's not going to be able to get, like, he's... He's gonna get the leader, and then like his overall is effectively not as good. Five get lower on the part that he's attacking. But we're gonna see Eric go for a double strike critical right here, which is really cool. I like being able to know, see if I have critical and combo. A really cool uh, aspect that the bar off leader does give you, because um, so you don't know if that crit is 100%. It's not 100% a lot of the time. Uh, when I was playing the deck, it was, it was pretty consistent actually. I think I got crit every single time except for one time. And it just really depends on your ratios and how you play the deck. I haven't had much, you know, opportunity to actually play around with the Bardock deck at all. I've been more more focused on trying to, as Dusty would say, break the meta with uh, with counter meta because that's my big thing. I love playing anti-meta. I hate, I, I despise playing meta, like with a heartbeat. Uh, I'm looking at uh, at Bardock right now and then just double decking him over. Um, all he needs is to hit black card and become critical. Black crit, yeah. So any card goes in the drop area plus 5k. So he's a 15k unawakened, 20k awakened, which is pretty strong. And if you're running a heavy amount of black cards, you're pretty much always going to hit that. Pretty crit. Strong, strong. And he's also, I think he's playing the mirror that discards a card. Relentless Destruction Mirror, and I believe that is the mirror that discards a card. Let's see here. Yes, it is the one that discards a card. The Power Aura one is the one that uh, gains 5,000 if you have like 5 or more, or gains another 5,000, uh, like 10,000 total if you have uh, 10 or more in your mark, which I honestly like that card, and it came in Destruction Deck. And 
which is very powerful. It's 25 out of nowhere. You know, it doesn't have crate or anything crazy like that. But it is 25 for overrun with three, which is pretty significant. Your opponents usually hit it, taking that hit like nine times out of ten. But you can only overwhelm one per turn, yes. but he hard cast the uh, the Toa. So the one drop. That's the one drop Toa, guys. So he didn't overwhelm twice, he hard cast it. Uh, because it actually doesn't have overwhelm on it. So uh, auto, when you play this card, look it up to the top seven cards in your deck. <coughs> Choose one Mira or Mass Saiyan among them and add that to your hand and then shuffle your deck. Yeah, a lot of these black cards that they printed now are actually not even overwhelmed. Like the Supreme Kai, which was one of the first black cards to not have Overrealm. That card is extremely good, especially in Eric's deck where you can insert almost any card. It's a very good utility card. It gets you a card to your warp, and then it brings it back to your hand as long as the Supreme Kai lives. So, an extremely good card. I think it searches the com super combo with Fly Lady. Super good card, and I feel like this deck has a lot of potential, and I really like the color black, and I think this is the perfect shell for it. Hope Eric gets this win in, and it looks like Gerson might be on his uh, back heel here. And he's only at two life. Also, uh, the other card that's on the board is the uh, Ooh. it's the two drop uh, Supreme Kai of Time. That Supreme Kai of Time just got him back his card that he had warped, which I forgot. It didn't. Oh, well, I think it might have been the self awakened bar the mass thing from. And if it was, then Eric's gonna be able to play that, take a life, self awaken. Unfortunately, though, if he uses the Mass Saiyan... If he uses the Mass Saiyan, he's not going to keep the critical yeah. if he awakens. But he is going to keep the Yep. Yeah. So, he might just do it. Here comes the Awaken. Okay, so he's not going to do it, he's just going to awaken. Remember, your deck is your resource in this game, and, and playing Bardock. You really don't want to get greedy with it sometimes. You don't want to mill every single turn. I mean, you do sometimes, but I don't know. Uh, Eric is going to go down to four Looks to like awaken. Three. Three? No. Is it three or four? I believe four. It looks like three. Because he just awakened, right? Yeah. He wasn't awakened Did before. he take a double strike hit? Because what I've been having them do on the back end is I've been having them put two, 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 two. Yeah. Um, but it looked like he might have. It might be It might be four. Eric, might be is four. Eric at three or four? Because it looks like really close. Uh, uh, it depends on how he set up his life. Okay. Looks like a clear three from our guys. So Eric is at three. I'm gonna send somebody over to verify what Eric's at life wise. Oof. Oof. Nope, oh, just going all in. Oof. Gerson's at two, so might as well. At this point, you're just going all in. Bye. Big number. Big, big, big boy number. Just looks at his head like, yep, get two. <laughs> kind of irrelevant now, but. Uh for our runner to come back and tell us how much he uh how much life he had yeah so gersten um uh, eric takes a uh, game one and the deck does exactly what the deck needs to do honestly it, it's a very powerful deck it's you know far off because the leader is just so much it's so very it's so good at like managing resources not only does it put cards in your graveyard to fuel your overwhelm cards but it does give you extra power and gives you a very critical ability and that critical ability uh, really takes cards from your opponent uh <laughs> it's better just punned at me guys how do i help you how do i what do i do but it's very good it's very good uh barak is uh, an un underestimated leader for sure and you, you see the power in I think it's built very, very unique. See, it's funny. Once you get to a point where there's like, you get past the mecha freezes, like, you literally get past the mecha freezes and it's just open to you. Like, literally, it's just, you see Pain, you see Bardock, you see Super Saiyan 3 Goku, we actually need a couple untapped Gokus. It's just, it's literally so many different decks. Androids, but then the first, like, all, like, all the undefeats for the most part are all mecha freezes. So it's like slowly, people who didn't have the better builds, didn't have a card for Mecha Freeze, are slowly starting to peer out. And you know, we're in on what, five now? So we're at the crucial point. And you heard it. So both He's of these really are critical gonna be... again. Is this gonna be a thing? Or he's gonna keep saying critical? It's critical because we're in a critical matchup here. And uh, <laughs> it's very, <laughs> it's, I don't know, it's just very good. Eric's a good player and he saw the the potential in Bardock and a lot of people see the potential in some decks and sometimes they can't, they, they don't want to go for it because they don't feel confident in the ability of it to match up against other very high powerful decks like Mecha. And 
you know, it looks like Eric has got down uh, some of these uh, matchups. And he's, he's a champion. What do you expect? He is a champion in New Year. He's yeah, been he's, here a million times. Yeah, yeah. He's very good. Sec like I said, second play, a second best uh, UK player in the world. He finished second at the World Championships. And uh, was, was our national match. champion. That was a rough match. It was. was, uh, it was, was it, if you want a, a, a definition of brick, that, that's definitely the match to watch. But uh, unfortunately, he was under the bad end of the stick on that one. But uh, still national champ, both also a YCS champ. So he know he, he's no stranger. He's no this, pushover. Uh, competitive, he no knows how to play games. Atmosphere. So fantastic job. And, and I'm glad he's playing something unique like this. Honestly. I love seeing unique decks like this. And I actually wanted to build this deck. Like If I were to be playing today, I'd be playing something unique. When was the like last this. time you actually played? Uh, like you commentated the last top, regional. You did play in the one before yeah, that. Yeah, I topped, I topped the first like two or three regionals, and then after that, uh, I didn't top like once or twice, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna commentate for the rest of the, uh, the season. Let my players do the winning. But uh, we're going into game number two of round five, and we got Eric Christensen up one with Bardock against Pan. I really can't express how excited I am that Bardock is actually poised to make a top 16 finish here at a 100 plus person event. And it's gonna happen against Penn, which is great. I, I really wanna see how this Bardock does against Mecha Frieza, but uh, this will do for now because these are two interesting decks that I love to see uh, hit up once uh, one another. And I really wanna see how Eric does against Mecha, like I said. Uh, I hope he like makes it to the top 16. He'll be my first pick. I'm sure he'll be playing paired up against Mecha Frieza. And I wanna see how that goes down because that critical ability is no joke, especially because Eric can just uh, play two creatures off the bat and just be able to um, just be able to like kill his opponent or drop him down to a number where their event cards won't be as effective. So it looks like Gersten should be choosing to go first here. Or he might just give Eric the, the, the start because I, I might give Honestly, if I was Gerson, I'd probably just be like, Hey, Eric Christensen, you can go first. Because it just makes Eric skip a turn. It makes Eric skip a turn because he's not going to play his mass, uh, his mass sane ability to mill three. And if he does, he's not going to be able to attack. He's not going to get the uh, benefits of 5,000 boost. And he's not going to get the benefit of the critical boost. It's just going to be like, I just passed my turn. He's just going to charge one and pass. You know, charge one or play the chopper and pass or something like that. So... It's something that's not effective at all. So I probably would have given it to Christian to go first, but um, Gersten chooses to go first just for the energy, the energy advantage here in this game, which might be right. All right, so uh, Christensen going for the first attack here, trying to get a critical snuck in there, but Gersten's not having that. He's bringing a double shot Vegeta, which is a free 10K, and it's just gonna come down here. So, Gerson's turn to, he's thinking about what to do, and looking at Gerson's side deck, he has four Kaba's Awakening, three dependable, dependable robot Giru, two combination attack pen, two increasing evil mass Saiyan, so he's playing that mass Saiyan that Eric Christensen's playing as well. It's very good for decks that don't self-awaken each other, because... It one it pins you for one, so it's like a Saiyan Kaba, but it is also removal. So it's kind of like a Beerus that any deck can play for one energy and overrealm of four, I believe. So it is a very interesting card, very good card as well. Uh, three chain attack, uh, chain attack trunks, and one fearless pan in Gersten's sideboard. Now the increasing evil mass Saiyan probably terrible to put in. I, I would definitely not put that in if I was Gersten. Uh, it is very good in Eric's stack, but I wouldn't say it's very good yeah, against Eric. Uh, unless Eric really, like, sticks to Jiren and Jiren stays there for a while, but that's the only card that I see a very good against. I, see, I don't know if I even side deck at all here. If I'm Gersten. I mean... It's not a terrible matchup for Gerson. He's just got to know what Eric can and can't do. So... 
Eric playing. Looks like he's sideboarded in Bodyguard Legic. Which is very interesting, actually. I don't know exactly. Oh, there goes Bodyguard Legic. Now, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting card. It comes out for free if your opponent has any battle cards and you don't have any battle cards. So, uh, pretty good in this deck, actually, because you don't have creatures that really stay on board. Like I said at the beginning of the match, this Bardock deck is not something that you build up board presence in. So it's not something that you're just gonna have a field and then you're not gonna be able to play a bodyguard. The bodyguard is actually extremely good in this deck because of its lack of board presence. So you're gonna see bodyguard actually hold down the fort while Eric keeps summoning these overround creatures which will go in, do their job, and leave the board right swiftly right after. So we're gonna have Eric come in with Saiyan Kaba here and he played an increasing evil so he's going to be able to pin himself for two, which he did, and go all the way to the self-awake. Eric now at four life. He's at four life, so he's already awakened himself because of those two self-harm cards, which is extremely critical. Speaking of critical. Oh my god, yes, I'm back. I get it. You immediately make a critical pun at me the second I come in. Guys, I do have a little bit of information for you guys that I want to get out there to the community. Um, it's been asked to me several times today. And I want to go ahead and get it out. Uh, when it comes to super combos, you cannot side four of like four extra super combos. You can only have four super combos between your main and your side deck, which well, is an interesting up. thing. Yeah, it came up, and it came from none other than Mr. Mr. Troll himself. Who is Mr. Troll himself? Peter Katani. Peter Katani. <laughs> so was Peter like actually like? No, uh, no, they're not. They, he was literally just. Trolling. He was just asking. Okay. Yeah. But it's an interesting thing, and uh, I, you know, it, it's just one of those questions, and it, you know, it had to be brought up. I, I guess to bring it, it makes sense, like uh, four super combos in your deck versus four super combos in the entirety of your deck. Yeah, I guess might be a thing, and probably a little bit interesting if Bendai were to do something like that, where you can actually play four of a super combo in the main deck and then just side deck a different super combo. I mean, like. I don't think that's like the most terrible idea. I would be willing to say it's fine because I consider the two as two separate decks. The main board and side board. Yeah. yeah. They can but. never, I mean, they can technically coexist at one point, uh, but as long as you're double checking that you don't have more than four super combos, but then that opens the door to being like, why you, like, let's count your super combos in your deck, and then people might take advantage of the fact that you don't have public knowledge of your opponent's deck. And they'll just, you know, be tempted maybe to do this and, you know, where regularly if it's even caught that they have a fifth super combo, then you get a game loss. You would be like, well, how many do you have? So, I totally understand both arguments together. Yes, but it yes. seems really interesting. I have to say it because I did have to call Casey to see his opinion on it. So, Casey's like, no shout out to me. Are you happy Casey Campbell and Judge of ARG? What's happy. up, Casey? Thanks for watching our stream. Appreciate it, man. It, it happens, guys. We, we, we can't see everything that's happening, you know what I mean? So I see that Eric sided into the Legix that he had in his, uh, his yeah, board. No, I was talking about it. Legic is actually really good in this deck because you don't maintain a board presence. Sure. It's free. And you're playing an aggressive deck in pan, so uh, I would see exactly why uh, you would want to do that. So what I miss? Uh, nothing much. I mean, Eric... Eric went second. Uh, Gerson chose to go first, which I, I, I like argued against because I think Eric should have been forced to go first by Gerson. Therefore, uh, that way he can utilize the ability of his leader. And, you know, Eric proceeded to summon it. So, it looks like... Fearless Pan is down for Gerson, and he's going to go and take the critical. And Mira coming in now with 20k critical at Gerson's life. And what I really like about this Bardock deck is it does not give your opponent a single card. Like, you just want to crit, 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 and your leader always has access to the critical ability. And it's just so good. Person down to five here. We'll see if 
Yeah, Eric's gonna be like, I'm not gonna awaken you. Even though he has the option to just Kaba. Kaba go to three, put Gerson to three. It's not... It's something that's not necessary right now. Like you can choose, you can afford to give your opponent another turn of being an awakened, and then choose to go after their life. It's not something that has to be stressed to the point now because now on Eric's next turn, he could actually start off with saying Kaba double strike and then start pressuring Gerson with some critical abilities uh, when Gerson's awakened because. Now Bardock's going to be swinging for 20 if it hits, and Pan's only 15 on the flip side, just like any other leader. Oh, it looks like, uh... Okay. Looks like Pan just got awakened at 3. So, Gerson with a fearless pan and a determined Super Saiyan, some Goku. Does he have the combo? Yep. He has the EX Evolve, so he's paying the cost, paying the energy, discarding a card, revealing the card. This is how the EX Evolve works. You have to reveal, pay the cost, play the card. Eric choosing to read it. No, the guy did not choose for his opponent to go first, but I believe you can. Yeah, this is game two, guys. We'll double check, actually. Let me see Eric's deck, if he's playing any Kaioken. Eric is not playing any Kaioken Gokus from what I see here. Is that the Kaioken, yeah, Kaioken TP3 promo that you guys are talking about in chat? Because there's none on here and I have Eric's list right in front of me. And isn't that green, isn't that like a blue card or something? Yeah, so I'm not sure. Everybody stopped responding. Uh, there is no Kaioken Blue in Eric's deck. I have his deck list right in front of me. And I haven't seen one of the builds. And I believe that's a blue card on top of that. And, and Eric's playing a red-black deck. So I... I there, I don't know. The chat's saying that um, Eric is playing a Kaioken Goku in the deck. But isn't Kaioken Goku blue? Just go yeah. double check his deck. Yeah, I mean, like, he's playing a red-black deck. I don't know why he's playing that. But we got Scotch Head Judge going to go over and check out the deck and see if that is true. But like I said, I don't believe so unless you guys really saw it. Yeah, it's definitely... We're going to go double-check his deck uh, because you guys did uh, claim to see it. And we're just going to make sure that there is no Kaioken Goku because we have deck lists of both players in front of us right now. And there is no Kaoken Goku in the list. But we are still gonna check. So, still trying to figure out. I think they're checking his deck now. Yeah, this is our rule not allowing TP3 promos. Jim at ARG is also not allowing TP3 promos. Uh, it's just to help maintain the integrity of the game you don't want to allow players 
to have a significant advantage because they obtained promos from shops that are corrupt and opened their TP3 promos and gave them out to players. So it's something that we're gonna upheld uh, for every release event uh, for the first Saturday. Of course, Sunday, tomorrow, Team Wars, we will be allowing TP3 promos because everybody should have their TP3 promos. Maybe not the play sets, but we've handed out over 100 today. So there is a possibility that 25 people can have play sets if they'd like, or at least one copy. So we have Head Judge Scotch back here. Uh, what were your findings? Guys, I don't Investigator know Scott. I don't know. Dateline, Scotchy, 1923. Um, no, there's no, like, here's the thing. He's playing a red black deck. That card is gonna A, stick out like a sore thumb, and B, I went through his side deck, I went through his main deck, his drop area and everything. <coughs> There's no, like, literally, he looks at me, and, like, his opponent looks at me at the same time, and they're like, no, we haven't seen any blue cards. I don't know what you're talking about. And, like, I verified everything. He checked it. I don't know what you guys are saying, but I would really appreciate if you guys didn't try and troll us. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, uh, no, you cannot win them on Friday. You, um, the, the specific release date, I believe, is Saturday. Regardless, every store in the area here is uh, Saturdays, I believe, for all, any type of promo events. Yeah, ARG and PPG, arguably the biggest stores in the nation, um, both mutually agreed to uh, use this ruling just because, uh, you know, th it's there's, fair. I mean, it's, it's fair. fair. That's why. It's, it's, it's unfair fair. Like, if everybody are, has things because of these are, We have locals, you know, we have locals uh, in our state, and all, all the locals are Saturdays, and there's no way to actually obtain the promos before then. And it puts everyone at a level, a level playing field, and, you know, it doesn't reward people who went out of their way. Did unfair things with unfair stores you know it's correct it, like i was y'all asked my opinion i was like no we're not gonna allow them and then at the same time to further prove the point we gave out tournament packs round three so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah we made sure to give them out tournament pack uh, to round three uh one it, it pretty much uh prohibit, prohibits people from just like entering a tournament to buy promos because we're not in the business of selling promos uh, that's not what we want. We want to uh, want to encourage attendance. We want to encourage participation. So uh, everybody here um, came out and they actually participated. And uh, some of them have dropped at this point because by round three, you pretty much know if you're going to top or not. Or you're on the way. Or Unless have a it's chance. like a 10 round tournament and you're like, you know what? I'm yeah, not below like we're not like gonna go. Six. We're not going to go and like give it out to round 10 like that. That's the same. But uh, I think round three was a very unfair um, point. I think ARG did the same way. No, yeah, we, got model for yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, we both model ourselves in, in the best possible way, and I feel like uh, ARG is a great model, and we're a great model to fault. So, uh, many other stores will obviously do what they want, and that's why some of them will really get banned or suspended. And, you know, we will always keep uh, the level uh, of play fair. Integrity. You know, integrity of the game. And not with the spirit. <laughs> Both players taking their time now, trying to try and figure out because now we're getting into the re real sense. Mark is up one, hands down one, so it's like we're starting to get to that point. You see that Eric's at two life and Gerson's at three life, so it's like both players are starting to get a little, you know. This is we're getting to that point in the game where you're like, all right, well, I have to do something because if I don't, you know, I lose this, and then I have to win the next two rounds. Yeah, Gerson might be. I think he's on a significant advantage. This way. Because Eric being at two is really gonna. It's not gonna really. Well, he overwhelmed for the turn two, so he can't have. That's the only uh, downside to this promo. This, uh, this promo Bardock, the Mass Ann. Because he can't. He can't send a card to the warp if you're at like two or one. Like at one, you can't. At two, you, do you really wanna put yourself to one just, uh, to, just to get rid of this huge threat on Gerson's board? Because this is something that Eric's going to have to find an answer to. And if he doesn't find an answer to it this, uh, this turn, if Gerson untaps with that Rising Fist, uh, it's not going to look very good for him. Not at all. What really worries me is this cob that Eric has. Because you know he's going to try and push with it. Spider-Verse, yes, we will be posting all these videos on our YouTube page. And Terragon, yes, the decklist for the event will be shared on DBSX. That is our partner. All the deck lists will be available as well on there, and you're going to be able to build those decks yourself and test them out on Octagon if you like to. Uh, it gives it, it gives it to you like in a compatible file that you can use like Untap or, or uh, Octagon on. So uh, be sure to check out DBS Deck. We'll be posting all the deck lists after the event uh, right on there. Uh, 
Yeah, also Twitch video on demand is the thing, Tarragon. You can uh, check that out. Yeah, Twitch bots. Absolutely, I love Twitch bots. Yeah. And okay. you can clip our funniest moments, like uh, me harassing uh, Machado for saying Jaco instead of Jaco, oh uh, or him harassing me by saying critical every five seconds. You know, <laughs> yeah. but hey, it's funny, you know. <laughs> At my expense. I just don't like. Uh, I just don't like being able to find the footage and like scrolling through like a five-hour clip or ten-hour clip. And it's, I think it's more like an hour clip. That's why you can Google Doc and have people like the funniest moments you. Oh yeah, battle series is gonna be—it's gonna keep going. I'm sorry for the lack of uh, content on the battle series so far. We've only gotten through two this whole week, which I think is uh, you know, obviously underwhelming. But we're very busy. We had a very busy time at the, at the store. I think we had like 23rd people help us open boosters and like with pre-orders and all this stuff. Like it was just really insane. Uh, really insane with a very hectic week and then obviously building up to the preparation of the super release tournament we wanted to make sure we're prepared as possible store looked brand spank new thank you Dasashi for helping out with that as well but a lot of preparation went into this event and I'm glad that everybody's having a great time it sounds like everybody's super really enjoying themselves we had the same repeat customers from the ARG state championship we had over 100 players so uh, really fantastic time really hectic week though we're gonna try to get a few more battle series in at least like I want to say a minimum of three next week, uh, next week. But three is like, you know, our low shot. I really want to get to a little bit higher. But it looks like Eric is coming up. And... Yep. I think Eric lost that, right? Yep, Eric lost that. Both players are at one life, and the question is, does Kyle go through? Unfortunately, Machana was talking and not paying attention. But uh, it looks like we're going to game three, guys. So, um, I mean... You, you can see the weaknesses of the Overrealm deck with Eric Christensen. It is something that, sure, it has a lot of offense, but the defense might not be there. So, especially with a leader like Bardock that relies on, like, milling your resources, like, you could just be really unlucky and just mill your tickets. What if you do that? Like, whoa, that well, is insane. that is a bad time. Yeah, That's that is that a is. really bad time because... You can have bad time, okay? Yeah, <laughs> you, have, you have no control on, you know, what you're milling. So, just like in Yu-Gi-Oh, playing Lights and stuff, you can mill all your power cards, and then you just draw all your bricks, you know? But, uh, fortunately, in this deck, there's not many bricks. Everything's pretty much usable, for the most part. But, you might just hit those cards that are, like, extremely critical. Like, super nice. So, it might be something that, uh, is a downside, but sometimes could be an upside, because you could just mill the cards that you don't really need. Why are you doing this? Dude? What? I want to know why you're punning at me. I don't like. Hello? I'm punning. Why are you so mean to me? It's a, it's a pastime. I thought we were friends. It's fun. But, oh, it's fun being mean to me? But Eric Christensen <laughs> has a few things on the sideboard. As we saw, Bodyguard Legic. I think that was a great call on his part. Um, I don't know how it must feel or anything like that. But he, he was able to cast it. And he did have one in energy. So it is something that can really protect him. And. The absolute attack Miram. That's a promo against blockers, but I don't it is think, a promo. Very good. I don't think Gerson. Uh, I don't think Gerson plays any blockers. So that, uh, that card probably wouldn't come. The sub go ten maybe against Fearless Hand or no Fearless Hand's got a. Uh, I don't see any blockers. I don't see any blockers at all. Actually, doesn't matter. Running a lot of negates. He's run four negates, but he's also siding four cause awakenings. That extra added 1k. Yeah. Well, oh my god, that 1k. 6k, yeah, but yes, but the 1k is, is aggravation, is what it is. Rounds up, rounds up on the attack, right? So you yep. won't be able to round up on the defense, but it is something that can give you that extra push if you really need it. But we're going into round. Game 3. No, game 3. Oh, game round three. 4. 5. 5. Jeez, 5. It's been a long time. Tired? Yeah, I'm getting a little tired. Oh, okay. I need to get a little bit more energy, man. You can get some but caffeine. Chug that, chug that monster. Just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. chug it. That's that's what got me through that uh, that event was just even though I was commentating for like uh, like two hours. Yeah. But uh, shout out oh, to yo, uh, Monster. <laughs> Our future sponsor. Who knows? Can we like 
put a, a fake tattoo monster emblem on your forehead. Right. You know, just like red on the head. Like the Majin instead of the Majin oh Vegeta. It's just a monster God. Vegeta. But guys, we're going to get into game three now. Here we go. Let's see if Eric can pull this out with all the our boy Bardock, Goku's father. Let's see if he can trample over this pan deck. Pan can be very, very uh, scary, but it looked like Eric going first here. And then Gerson fighting back with the Kaba. And it looks like Eric might have taken that. Is he at six or at eight? It looks like he might be at six. I believe he, he did six, take yeah. that. Six energy. Yeah. Life. Life. And Gerson at seven. So yeah. uh, off the Kaba effect. And that's what I didn't agree with last turn or last game when Eric was at two life, but he wanted to try and push the double strike off of Kaba, but then he puts himself a one. And at that point, literally everything's lethal against you. Yeah. I mean, those, those turns that you do that, you have to be very, very, like, you just have to be very careful. Like, you don't ever want to pass that one. See, I'm super used to going down to one life, so. <laughs> Relentless, Relentless Destruction Hero. He's gonna come down. And I believe that's the one that was your opponent in the front So I don't think Gersh might be thinking about what he wants to get rid of. One of my favorite cards, actually. One of your favorite cards, but you Guess think you know the effect? Oh yeah, no, I, I just want to make sure because there's, <laughs> there's two mirrors that are three energy that have the three over realm and they look very similar. There's power aura one and then the over realm. So it looks like that's going to down the combo and the mass thing is going to go and grab some space. It is relentless to start with this card. Toa's gonna look for a Mass Saiyan. Boom, and we get the Mass Saiyan Pro. So you're gonna see Gersten here either not hit Eric for anything or just awaken Eric. I would just awaken Eric here. Um, but Eric does have a block at body guard. So it might just be better for Gersten to just build a board and I wouldn't even try attacking here because if he attacks for one, then Eric goes down to five. Eric plays the Mass Saiyan. Goes to four, he's self awakened, and then you're in for a bad time. So, Maybe a bad time, okay? Very bad time. Oh, and he's going for the attack. Alrighty. If you're Eric here, you just snap. Oh, you don't. No, no, snap. You snap, snap, take that attack. I mean, why not? It's because not like it's critical. You want to go to five. Well, he takes the critical, but doesn't take the not critical. Interesting. Very interesting. I mean, you do have to dedicate a little bit more to that trunks. You have to dedicate a, at least 1k. So, that's what he's doing. Critical actually not as bad for Eric in this deck because he is fueling his own. True, true. The more that he fuels it, the better off it is. Like, yeah. Especially if it's not you whittling down his resource. Does he run food? No. I want to see food I would, play. I would play one food. Why not? Why not? You know? Yeah. What overall ton for six energy? It's just six energy is so high. I feel like this doesn't make sense. This problem yeah, with this meta. This meta is too fast yeah. for a six energy card. Exactly. Unless you have a way to cheat it out. You know, like uh, just evolve is a way to cheat it out. But you know, with uh, with Foo, you gotta have six energy. You know what? Or I, seven think, energy. I think that I think Foo would be really good in that Goku. The Super Saiyan three Goku deck because you start with two energy, so it already like ramps you a little bit <sighs> the thing is you can only get to six energy in that deck wait you play the supreme kai of time also that the west i think the west module the one that like adds energy so you technically get seven energy without actually getting to seven energy best leaves terracon i would say Ultra Pro Clips, 100% of the way. Not because Ultra Pro is our sponsor, shout out to them, by the way. It's just because the quality is so fantastic and the sleeve is just so unique. You don't have anything similar to it whatsoever. The Dragon Shield are kind of similar to the KMC. Um, and then the Eclipse are in a class of its own. And that's why I feel like what makes them so unique and so, uh, and so like, they're just smooth. It's, if you've ever shoveled an Eclipse deck versus just like a regular deck, it just gives you like this completely different feeling. And it's just so satisfying. And they're really nice. Honestly, I don't think their durability is number one in the game. 
I don't think any suit is like clearly better in every category. I mean, I have a problem with eclipses, yeah. so. Or not eclipses with uh, dragon. Shield. I chip dragon. Shield I like dragon. Sh I like dragon shields. It's just like dragon shields are good. Like best. I think they're the best durable. See, I chip them and I break them all the time. But then with like ultra pros and eclipses, they don't last me very long. Because anybody who's ever seen me play knows I hand shuffle like a fiend. Like a fiend, so I wear down skins really quickly. But either or, it doesn't matter what I play. Apparently, I just get, you know, the bat in the stick when it comes to these. I am pretty excited to see the new Broly deck with the support of Khalifa and Kaba. I've always been a huge fan of Broly, and I really want to make that deck work again. I just really want to get the, my hands on P3 Trunks, because they're going to be really hard to get for the first few weeks. So Always are. Yeah. So it's going to be really month, hard. So it's always hard to get the we actually had a few people sell us. Uh, I think they sold some... Uh, Foil Broly does, but we already like as soon as some of you saw them in the binder, they're like, oh, I'm just gonna keep them and get that. Boy. So, uh, yeah, and unfortunately, I, I want to make sure the player base, you know, local community, and all those guys uh, have the cards available to them to build decks because that's what we've been playing and stuff like that before uh, we prioritize any of our players or us. We'll eventually get them. So, um, there's no rush for us, to be honest. But, no, the Evil Mask Sane is considered technically a promo. Yes, just like Dash Pack promos. They're all considered promos. The only thing that we did not allow is the Tournament Pack 3 promo. Yeah, that, was, that was the rule. Those are completely different. Yeah, those are only eight different cards. Uh, so it's not include the uh, Increasing Evil. It does not include the uh, Kaba, the Great, uh, the Great Ape, Vegeta, um, you know, the Pan, etc., etc. If it, So the difference between those and the set 3 promos is, you know, the dash pack promos and the promo from the special edition are relatively easy to get. I mean, Anybody you just have to buy. You just have to buy product. It's pretty much a participation prize for buying product, which is. <laughs> I would have never thought of it that way. What? <laughs> yeah, you got a participation prize. Here you go. Yeah, Here's you participated free. in giving Bandai some Money. business and some monies, so we're gonna reward you with a pretty cool promo. And yes, yeah, the difference between those and the tournament, uh, the, the participation tournament pack three promo. Those are just ones that you only get one per tournament, usually unless it's this tournament where you're going to be winning 20. Gerson, he can even some damage now down to three against Eric's four. So they're starting, Eric's starting to try and push forward. Uh, has, interestingly enough, bigger board than Gerson does currently. Yeah, I mean, when you play Bodyguard and it comes out free, and then you play another overall move that's usually dead at the end of the turn for free, and then the Supreme Kai just has to stay on board in Eric's deck for it to actually function. And then everything else that he plays is just one energy, so he'll have a manipulated guard Champa at some time, so he'll have a say Kaba at some other times. So, uh, pretty good board, though. So, a good move by Eric. I, I really think that once you get that Supreme Kai of time to resolve, I think that's a huge, huge like turning point because not only does it give you a body of five, three 5k combo, etc., etc., it, it just gets you another piece in your deck and maybe the piece that you need to awaken. Evil Mass Saiyan Bar, I can removal, same thing, Evil Mass Saiyan Bar, uh, Bar, I can need end destruction and relentless, uh, destruction of Mira, you need to side the of card and have a short chunk, which Eric is not playing. He's not? He's not playing Tapu. For those of you who don't know, one of us each gets deck lists. So uh, I have I have Gerson's and uh, Machado has Eric's. So I haven't actually looked at Eric's. It's interesting. It's very interesting to me. Him actually not playing, in my opinion, one of the best black cards in this game is very, very, it's, it's an interesting play. That's crazy. I don't know. I, I would probably drop the Dark Plot from his deck if I had to make any changes. Uh, dark Plot, minus Dark Plot, plus Time Patrol. Comes. I think Dark Plot is good, but I think it's only really good with... Uh, the unrelenting assault trunks and the other trunks, the killer sword trunks, I believe. Uh, and, and those all come in the same starter deck. And when I was playing starter deck versus starter deck, I, I found some cute combos with those three cards. So they were cute. Why, uh, they were pretty cute. They were There were so many cool things that I was doing, playing a lot of cards, having a lot of fun, hitting my point for a lot of cards. Like you know, it's just they work very well together. But uh, I feel like Dark Plot might be a little bit out of place in this deck. The only thing is that Dark Plot plays the Relentless Destruction Mirror. Now my only question is... When that... you play this card using Overrun. Okay, yeah. So even if he plays the Relentless Destruction Mirror, he won't be able to discard a card from his opponent's hand, which I feel like the Dark Plot would be very good with if that was possible. But maybe Eric doesn't know. Who knows? 
Oh, no. It allows you to play it with Overrealm. Oh. So, that, that combo does Use this card to play a battle card with Overrealm. No, no, no. Use this card to play a battle card. Oh, she's up three Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you play a card that has Overrealm on it, then okay, you can... Yeah. I but can't read. It doesn't Overrealm it if you play it. Rip the Dream. Pretty good run, boys. I'm trying to break the meta. And girls are out there. I'm not discriminating. Yeah, uh... Dub, Weezy, yeah, we're probably gonna put uh, Alejandro up here. The, the winner of that stream. match will probably come on stream, because right now they're playing. Yeah, well, they're also playing. Yeah, they are playing right now in Switch, actually. I don't, I don't think the viewers knew that, but, um, you know, Peter's been declining every he feature match. Is. He doesn't have a choice next round. He just doesn't want, I guess he just doesn't want players to see his deck that are still playing in the tournament. But. I'm telling you now, I'm gonna go there to Peter if he won or Ollie wins. Ollie didn't care. Ollie was like, I'll come on stream. And I was like, all right, cool. Peter's like, mm -hmm. so I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna make this man if he wins. If Peter wins, I guarantee you next round will be on stream. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, he might not want to be on stream in, in, uh, in Swiss. He'll probably hop on stream in Hopka. Like, bet. Yeah. Bet. <sighs> I bet. All right. I'm you very him then it's sure. Hey, I'll power to you. I'm a very convincing person, Machado. I just convinced you to say, sure, you're probably right, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> Did I not? You were against me. Oh, yeah, I couldn't be. Peter's very good. Very good. Hey, Brazy. <laughs> <laughs> Eric is in here with two Supreme Kai. It looks like they're both going to resolve this very good card. So that's the Supreme Kai of time. All right, the Supreme Kai is a very different time, to, or a, a very different position in the Dragon Ball Ooh, universe. Yeah. Okay. There's so many I Supreme Kai's, I, I don't even get why there's so many. There's one for every universe, except for Universe 7, which for some reason had a ridiculous amount of them. Who knows? They're the just there to chill. They're the counterbalance that the guy is Have you not watched the show? You are a man of dungeon! <laughs> Or to swap though. Person has a few, a few threats. I'm gonna steal a card. Am I gonna steal a card? I can't tell. Is that a fine size? That's like a fine Ooh, size. Mass Zane is gonna go into Eric's hand, and that's gonna be able to clear the threat too. Depending on how Eric wants to clear the threat, he should be able to get to. I don't know. This has been a very back and forth match though. It has. But I've also been having to run out for judge calls every five minutes, so. <laughs> the players taking their time now because this is, they're getting close to the end of their match. Both players wanna, wanna guarantee their lock in the top cut. You know, this is table four, so we'll see what happens, but. Uh... Winner here will go to 5-0. And... Later, nerds. <laughs> Some go tank down for Eric, which is going to be good in clearing a, an additional threat. Because he already has that mass hand, so he's going to be able to mass hand pop pop. And then, so go tank was able to already get rid of it. So, uh, a super combo down for Gersten, drawing him apart. Now, one last super combo that Eric has to deal with. I actually haven't seen any super combo down from Eric. Does he run? No, yeah, of course. Uh, right. Supreme Cot, no, no. It's a super good time. It's the Supreme Kai of Time World, World Protector. Protector. Yep. Four copies. Which she doesn't exactly do. She's not exactly a protector of the world. She's yeah. Kind of just a protector of the time. But whatever. You know, semantics. And I believe you can search it with the with the two drops. <laughs> Bodyguard going in for a hit. Legend! I feel like he needs that more protection than anything unless he's trying to make the push right now, but I don't think Two cards in Gerson's hand, too, so that might also be good. Well, you see a Saiyan pop in Eric's hand, so he's gonna be able to he wants to play this top here. Ooh, cabbage. Gerson did go down to two. Okay, 
he, okay. he took the So Gersten is at two life. And we're gonna Recurs. see the Sand Kaba come in here. We're gonna see the Kissane Kaba come in and just swing. Is it gonna be it? Yeah, Gersten's life and Recurs he's gonna, gonna get a card and he's just gonna go down. Eric loses one life, so he goes. Eric goes down to two life. And then you're gonna see a big push from Eric Christensen. There's a 10k. 10k super combo. There's another two energy used for 10k combos. Then you're gonna see these mass. Uh, you're probably gonna see these mirrors come down. And mass Saiyan. Is that mass Saiyan five? Mass Saiyan, I believe, is a check. He's a check. Promo. Oh, the promo? Wow, he's a 5k. Woo! Yeah, there it is. There's game. Eric gets it. Uh, putting Gersten down to two now, guys. I'm sure Gersten had enough to protect himself from going to two. And he should have known better than to do that, especially when Eric is playing the whole Trompa lineup. The whole Trompa lineup is very powerful because it ha gives you access to that further dest destruction of Trompa. And he should have just never gone to three, uh, two. I mean, like, uh, what, he was swinging? I think Eric was just hitting for, what, 15 or something? And then person was like, whatever, you know, three to two. What, what, what's the worst that could happen? The Chompa. worst is, is the worst that can happen. So, and you know, I've been noticing this, you know, like, hey, I'm not worried. Okay. Ah! There's only so many times before it happens to you that you learn that that is a thing and to never do it. And uh, sometimes it just goes along with how familiar you are, you are with the game and, and what things can happen and what things can happen. And I, I can't stress that enough. What can your opponent's deck do and what can your opponent's deck not do? Um, he had the information from game one and game two. I, I can see if maybe he lost game one for that. But it's something that you can't leave, you know, especially. He did, he did the exact same play in, in game two. Yeah. It just couldn't get it there. So whether you have further instruction combo or you have Saiyan combo, if your opponent had any access to double strike creatures just that, even a mass Saiyan, then it could really spell trouble for you. So uh, you really can't put your opponent on, yeah, you better have this double strike that they played young. And what spells trouble? Well, probably more than crit. <laughs> He tried. It's okay. I tried. Just, okay. Listen. Guys, okay, give it up to him and try to try. Y'all are mean. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll try to see something else. Did you see anything else unique in the top table? Because I, I wasn't able. I didn't have time to check. I'll take a look again, guys. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna answer a couple of questions real quick because we got a little bit of time left. Um, but then we're gonna go ahead and turn on commercial after this. So if you have questions, post them in the chat. Tag me at ScotchTY or tag Pro Play Games Live. Uh, we've got the phone up right now with chat, and we will we'll try and answer as many questions. If you got any ruling questions in the time in between time, throw over me. I'll help you out as best as I can uh, with as little information as you see. You for love giving me like Machado. Machado loves to be like, hey, do this. I'm like, all right. Well, what's the stuff to do this? And he's like, I don't know. Somewhere there. I don't it out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I really like the Evil of Freezer promo. I saw somebody in chat asking about it. Place a card from your opponent's hand. Right? Yeah. Well, it plays a card to your side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so yeah, that's the big designation I mean. between that is if it would say, like, it would designate on the card what side of the like, if it's going to go to your opponent's side yeah. of the field. Uh, Mecha Freeze does. The Mecha Freeze almost says, play it in your opponent's side of the field. Yes. This one says, play it. So when you play it, if it says play it, that's you play it on your side of the field. That's the big designation there. Um, it's really cool, especially with like super combos. Like you take your opponent super combo in the mirror match, and then you're just like, okay, now I'm gonna use the super combo. Which is I'm not running the same. I'm not running the same, you know, called leader as you. But hey, I'm gonna attack with it. Cause why not? But guys, I don't see any questions in the chat, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna throw it over. We'll see you guys at the beginning of round six. Two more rounds. Two more rounds to go, two guys. Rounds. Thank you guys. Uh, wait. Yeah, two more rounds. Round six, and round seven. Then we're going uh, cutting to a top sixteen. So we'll be back with that momentarily. We're gonna go take a look at the field and see what's left out there. It looks really interesting. It's gonna shape up to a really interesting top cut. We're gonna have a, a lot of popular players in the top cut, so. It's gonna be a whole lot of 12 mecha freezes. Yep, um, it's gonna be great. We'll see what wins this tournament. Thank you guys again, and we'll see you in a little bit. Peace. Peace. Philippe Roger here, co-owner of ProPlay Games. Here at PPG, we're constantly doing stuff to try to bring you more content and bring you more DBS deck techs and more coverage for you. And we're happy to announce our affiliation with dbsdecks.com. DBS Decks, the guys over there, Mark specifically, are working very hard to compile a list of all the top decks 
from all of the events across the nation. And there you can see even cards played on a percentage base within the archetype. So it's a great, great website. We encourage you to go and use that. Uh, so go ahead and check it out, dbs-dex.com and check out Pro Play Games for all your DBS needs. Stay pro.